Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream session and this morning we're bringing you another skills cast session showing that beginners and expert modelers alike can transform their model railways into fully fledged layouts with some really easy skills and items that we sell too. Today we're looking at adding walls and fences to your layout. These are essential parts of the scene both on railways and in other forms of modeling too, such as wargaming or indeed diecast vehicles. So there's some great opportunities to add these onto your layout of pretty much any era. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with seeing walls and fences out there wherever you are too. So I won't go too much into the history of how they're set up, et cetera, et cetera. I would recommend looking at prototype photos to see where these are installed and how they are installed but I will be giving some top tips on that throughout the show today too. And of course, showing you a number of different items that we have. Starting off with some really easy beginner pieces that take two minutes to add to your layout and then building up in the expertise to show you some of the skills that you can pick up pretty easily to enhance your layouts too. If there's anything you'd like to learn a little bit more on on today's stream, if you're watching live, feel free to ask while I'm doing the stream and I will answer as many comments in the chat as I can. If you're watching back a little later, feel free to put a comment underneath the video or get in touch with our customer experience team who will be more than happy to help you too. And as always, there's a link in the description for every item that I am showing here today. So let's get started. And as promised, I'll start you off with a real beginner piece. We need absolutely no tools for this one. So I'll just move these out of the way for one second. We will be coming back to those shortly. And I will give you a rundown of the tools that I am using here today. So we'll move on our work mat. Pretend that this is part of our layout that we see here. And I'll bring you over to the smaller camera. I'll bring that piece a little more to the front there. And what I'm going to be using first is the various pieces that we see here from the Javis range. Now, this is as they come to. These are pre-made, pre-ready to plant. They've got a flat surface on the bottom, so you can glue them onto your layout as you wish. And these come in a variety of styles. I'll just put some of those on the bench for you now. You have the wooden style sleeper fencing that you'd see quite often alongside different railways. You have various types of the stone walls there too. Other fences we have include the chain mesh or the chain link fencing that I'll put on there also. And these are a great way. They are a little bit more expensive than buying the plastic fencing and building in bulk. But this is a great way. If you do feel you lack some of the skills to build some of these layouts, these pieces come exactly as I am showing them on the screen here and now, and they are very, very easy indeed to attach to your layout. Now, as ever, if you're making a temporary connection, you can use grey tack or something similar like tacky wax. If you are putting down fences or scenery onto your layout, I really would recommend a more permanent connection there. So I'm going to use a little bit of PVA glue on the bottom of these. I'll just get my PVA glue there ready. So because we are going to put a decent amount of this on today, I am going to put it on straight from the bottle rather than putting it on with a separate applicator. Just again, making sure we're not putting too much on there, but we are adding enough that it will adhere to our surface. So just a line there, spread that around a little bit so it doesn't leak through the sides, keeping the glue to the middle as much as possible so we don't have any visual leakage onto the layout there. Put that down in our intended space, put a bit of pressure on it to stick it down. Give it a few seconds for the PVA to bond and that will stick. You can use super glue, but I wouldn't really recommend it with these. I would recommend PVA just as it's a bit more gentle on the materials that the items themselves are made of. So you see there, that possibly just needs a couple more seconds to bond. It's just starting to move a little bit in my hands. But if we leave that for a moment or two there, that will start to dry. You can see also that they're provided with a small amount of flock at the bottom. This is great to blend into your layout. So as you can see here, I've blended this into the static grass that I have already prepared. The colours are slightly different and you can match these up. They are more of a spring green colour 
on the various Javis items, but you can pick the flock up from them if you do want to blend it in on a layout that you've already built, or you want to build your new layout with matching colors on the bottom of these particular pieces. So they do come in a variety of styles. I'll just pull up some again onto our workbench for you. And you can see how these sit next to each other. They don't fully gel next to each other, but you can get them really up close as we do here. You can see there the join in these particular two pieces, but just making sure there that before the PVA dries, you do have your bits set up correctly. As you can see, once blended into the layout there, that join will look quite prototypical. As you can see through the rest of the fencing, these particular parts would never really join together too well in real life either. So you can see there that building up a join with these is quite easy and something that's not too much trouble to do at all. I'll just do it there with the stone version of the wall. You can just close up, you can see the join. But once you put a little bit of detail around there, including some items, maybe like a small shrub or a farmer or something like that, certainly any level of detail you can provide, you can really start to join these up and add them together. And as North Yorkshire more specific said there, they do look close enough. Certainly we've got them here really up close and personal on the camera. But once you've got them a fair distance away, as you can see, now you really can't see that join, especially when you have got some further items up against those two. As said, these do work out a little bit more expensive than the various kits that we do provide, but for the price you are then getting a fully finished model that is ready to plant on your layout as we've done here today. These start from around £1.10 a piece and the pieces themselves work out at between four and five inches long, depending on what particular piece you are picking up from us. We have a full list available on our website, so if you want to head over, they're all made by a company called Javis, and you can see them now on our website for more details. I'll just show you some of those chain link fences close up. We just had a request in the chat there for that, so I will just show you one of those. And again, these are designed in exactly the same way. There's a few different variations of types covering the either damaged or just ready to use types. So you can have a bit of variety in your fencing there too. And you can see here again, them joining together and ready to be planted more on your layer. So we'll get this out of the way and we'll start looking at some of the plastic kits that we do provide. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of these plastic kits. As you can see, I've got a very small selection here in front of me today. There's several different ways in how they're applied, and we'll be looking at some of the more basic ones of those and some of the more advanced skills here today too. This now is when we're going to start getting our tools out. So I will just move this board out of the way and move on my second board that I have prepared for you today. So we have a piece of road here. We already have a piece of fencing ready to go. I'll just put that over there. And the first fence I'm gonna look at requires no drilling at all, but it does require a craft knife and again, either some super glue or PVA glue dependent on what you are attaching it to. I'm using the post and rail fences from the Pico model scene range. Again, not quite as detailed as some of the fences out there. I'll just show you the picture on the packet. But available for a great price right now. They are a budget model. And you can see that no drilling is required because of the base plates on these particular items. So these can be built up really quickly and really easily indeed. So we'll get a couple of these out. And I'll show you just how to construct these up. So as said, we will need a safety scalpel for today. I've got one to hand here. If you do need one, we have several available on our website that you can pick up, or you may find one in your workbench there. These just come on a sprue. So as we've covered in quite a few of our videos now, just removing these from the sprue is a case of safely finding out where the join is and then just cutting away the pieces as we require them. If you want to be a little bit more perfect, you can file the edges or just cut them gently with the scalpel there too. For the purposes of today's live stream, I will be leaving those as they are, but it is something I'd recommend doing to get a really nice finish onto these particular items. It's exactly the same with the fence. 
so you can see there again this is on the sprue so we'll just cut that off where it joins onto the sprue making sure not to damage any of the detailing but these are only on very gently indeed so we can see there already that we have a model that's pretty much ready to go so the fence posts as you can see sit on the end of the fence where they should do these slide on just putting them on there you may just need to drill out the holes a little bit on the fence posts to make them sit a little better they may have just not come out slightly properly from the original machine but you will find that they sit on there there we go and slot on quite well you can glue them you may find that with most of these you don't actually need to glue them they are quite secure on their own right but as ever, if you do want to put a little bit of super glue on there before you attach the different pieces, I would recommend just putting a little part on the end of the fence posts that we have here. Extending these is really easy too. You can add further fencing on and you can build a full length of the fencing. I'll just cut off another piece off my sprue. Again, just cutting at the two joins there. And if you do want to be a little bit more delicate, you can then clean up where some of the joins are. But then we're just adding this on, slotting it into the holes on the other side of the fence. And putting that in there. You'll feel it connect quite well if it has connected. Again, if you are putting it in permanently, I would recommend a little bit of glue. So there we go. We've now got two parts of our fence ready to go. And the packs come with several lengths of the fencing, as you'll see here in the kit. You get, I think it's just over a meter in this kit, actually. But you can buy additional and additional packs as you need them building up. And this is great, as I said, if you've got a lot of fencing to put on your layout. It isn't quite as detailed as a lot of the fences out there. But it is available at a really great bargain price if you wanted to have a look at that on our website now. All the details are there. And the great item about this fencing too, I'll just pull you back over to the small camera, is as opposed to the Javis fencing that we've seen previously, this fencing is flexible too. So if you have any curves in your land or you want to build it around a curve in the roadway, you can curve and flex this too. It will bend back to its original shape. So if you are putting it down in a curved position, I recommend slowly but surely curving it, then gluing it, curving it, gluing it, and so on and so forth, building it up gradually, and then attaching that to your layout on the bottom of the posts, either again with a small amount of PVA or with a small amount of super glue, depending what you are on. So we've got two of our fences there now. We have the fence that we've seen first. I've got one more to show you, so I'll just spin this around. We'll put our own fences out of the way. So this is more modern fencing. This is the Palisade safety fencing that we see all across the UK and in various parts of the world now. This is part of the Wills kit, but again, you can pick this up from various different manufacturers in various different scales. And all the items that we have here on today's stream are, of course, available right now on our website, too. I'll just show you the pack for this. So, again, it comes on plastic sprues that we are cutting away. I'll just put one of those a little bit closer for you, and you'll see some of the variety in pieces that you get in this particular pack. This is the Wills Kit variation of this fencing in double O gauge. And you can see that as well as coming on the sprues, you can also see the extra parts there, such as the gates and the gate posts in there. So you can really build up quite a highly detailed model with a lot of variety in the fencing. This comes in quite an authentic grey shade, but you can paint it either before or after attaching to the model. And again, it's exactly the same method of cutting that away just making sure to cut away from the sprue there so we don't damage the model if we do overrun just making sure we pull away there again to attach as you can see so one i have prepared before is this particular piece here 
and you'll see that this actually has locating lugs rather than being ready to plant on the top of our layout from the fencing we used before this has secure lugs so this will securely sit and be planted into your layout with these located at various different points along the board so putting these onto your layout really couldn't be sim simpler i'm using a drill bit here check the different drill bits that you have in your collection to make sure you get one that's a good match just slightly bigger than the item there that you are drilling in i'm using a 1.2 millimeter drill bit here today and then measuring up the locations that this will sit on your layout too so you can either do this by planting the fence, as you see here, next to the layout, and just marking on with either a pen or a pencil as to where the holes need to be drilled. Or you can do this with a steel rule. You can measure out the different pieces. And again, then just know the, know the length of the different items and then put your points in at the various points you've got there too. So I've drilled out most of these already. I've drilled out the first four holes and now I've just got to drill out the fifth so this will sit in. So putting in our drill bit there, using our pin vise. If you are drilling into something like MDF, I do recommend being in a well ventilated area too. But you can see there just twisting that down is digging in to the wood on our board. And this is a great method that you can use also for many other materials just cleaning away the remnants there, finding the hole again and just clearing that up a couple of times to make sure we have everything fully cleaned and fully ready for the item to sit into. So a couple of goes there, just putting that through. And then we've already got our other four holes drilled there. I'll just open that up one last time to make sure we have a proper connection there let's try and find it first there we go so now all you need to do if you're putting this in permanently just a small amount of either super glue or pva glue again on the ends of these particular items putting that straight in there you'll feel it sit in the holes that we have created and that will give it some real security there as well in not being quite secure and just make sure that sits in and there we go so that is now in there it's actually quite level too and you can adjust that We're just putting it up and down of course and then you can either put a small amount of glue again to secure that in or then you can leave that as it is i really would recommend putting a little bit of glue on that though but you may find adding further items later such as flock or ballast around this helps that idea there too so that really is the more advanced side of it i've used a couple of different tools there today i've used the pin vise with a 1.2 mil drill bit although this will change for the different kits that have this method including the pico fencing the light side fencing that you see there and quite a few of the station fence kits there too but that really is secure there. As you can see, I'm giving that a bit of pressure now. And although the top is waning, it is quite secure in the bottom, whereas this would need the glue to dry on the bottom of the different pieces before that became as secure. And again, just mentioning there the different types that we do have that would stick down again. These would again be very secure once the glue has dried on them too. So that's quite a few different methods that we've got there today. As I said, I have blocked the zebra crossing there, so we may have to reposition our wall a little later on after the stream to allow people to pass over. But just showing you the different methods that we have here today. So you can either buy the really easy for beginners, ready to plant items such as the Javis fencing that we have here. The simple to construct Pico style fencing, and of course, this particular walls and fences that we have available from some of the larger ranges there too. 
There's quite a few different varieties in what you can get. It's not just fences. It is the likes of concrete walls. It's also station fencing. But one of those free methods will apply to the walls and fences that you are adding to your layout. It'll either be straight, ready to plant on your layout. It'll have its own feet underneath, but you will need to build it up as per a plastic kit. Or as we've done on our modern security fence in here, you will need to drill some small holes into your layout, but then you can really secure this down with the different pieces there too. So I hope you've enjoyed today's session. I hope I've shown you just how easy it can be to really add some boundary markers, walls and fences to your layout. Everything you've seen here on today's stream is available to order from us right now on hattons.co.uk and if you'd like to learn a little bit more too or if there's any questions I've not had a chance to answer please add them into the comments on the video or get in touch with our customer experience team who will be more than happy to help you out too. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more skills cast videos like this showing you many skills that you can incorporate onto your model railways to really enhance the level of details on your layout. Otherwise thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.